G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Cricket Mentoring Podcast. I'm very excited today as we have a special guest, Mr. Joel Curtis, who I'm going to introduce in a minute, but hello Jolie, welcome. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for having me back. It's Joel, good to be back in Perth. Yes, great to have you back. Joel is a long-time cricket mentoring sort of athlete and turned mentor over the last couple of years and is a record breaker. He has just returned from England where he was playing in the Middlesex League and he scored 1,242 runs at an average of 82.8, six centuries in the Middlesex Premier League. And today we're going to ask Joel a little bit about how he did it. He is an incredibly hard-working player, and I've had the privilege of working very closely with Jolly and following his progress, and I've always believed he had the potential for this, but potential and output is obviously two different things, and he certainly got the output this year. But before we get into this record-breaking season and we unpack what was different, because I know a lot of our listeners would love to learn from your success, and that's what this whole podcast is going to be about, Take us back a bit, Jolly. Give us a bit of an understanding of you as a cricketer, a little bit more about your age and where you're currently at and your your history as a cricketer. Yeah, cool. So I'm 22 at the moment um, and, yeah, always played cricket growing up as a kid and, yeah, was always, like, pretty good at it, was in the the underage stuff. and um, But I guess was just sort of, yeah, not reaching or, yeah, it takes a bit of hard work. Um, And it's taken, yeah, I guess four years of sort of hard focus work to, I guess, have the outcome of the season that I've just had. And um, yeah, it was sort of a decision, like I was doing my electrical apprenticeship when I finished school and I was like, I don't really want to do this the rest of my life. Um, Pretty good at cricket. And so I thought I wanted to just, yeah, really knuckle down and um, pursue that goal of yeah becoming the best I could and um that actually started with yeah reaching out to yourself and um getting started with just yeah learning off coaches and and mentors that have been there and been in that um space of professional cricket um to help me get to where I wanted to go um and I guess yeah I was never really six that successful compared to other players I played with growing up um I didn't make I got cut from the state 17 squad, the state 19 squad, um, which was hard at the time, but um, definitely used it to fuel um, where I wanted to go and, um, and yeah, had a really good season. Um, Just gone in England, which was really uh, rewarding for the years of hard work that I've done. Yeah, absolutely. And... We actually started working together when you were 16 and then I moved over to Perth where obviously you play. You've got the Perth Cricket Club shirt on now and I'm the batting coach there or specialist coach I think the term is. But um, we made our, our debut, our first grade debut for Perth together. Obviously, I was coming over after playing a fair bit of um, first grade for Melville Cricket Club. But you were 18 then and you've sort of had four or five seasons now. I think four full seasons of first grade. But one thing um, that I think people need to understand is is what you've put in to get to where you are now. And it doesn't just happen overnight. I think I love the the story of I'm a, I'm a 10-year overnight success and people are looking at your numbers now and I've been getting messages from all sorts of people saying, well, Joel Curtis is going well, isn't he? Because we've been sharing all your success across our socials. But let's give people a bit of an insight into the last few years. Like you said, you've been all in on your cricket, but... Going back to 2019, you went over to England for the first time um, and then obviously COVID happened and, and things sort of changed your plans. But give people an insight into your cricket over the last few years. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I guess you um, said I, I made my debut with you and I sort of came into first grade as more of a, a keeper batsman. Um, so I wasn't – my batting was sort of – something that wasn't getting me in the team um or doing too well so um yeah I had that season over in England which was was good for me I think it just allows you to express yourself and it really expand um your game um in all aspects and um especially being like an overseas player you have more responsibility um to win games for your team and that does a lot for your batting um, so I, that I learned a lot about my batting in that season, and then yeah, had 
still sort of showed some glimpses of what I wanted to bat like in, in Perth and um, never too consistent. Um, and then, yeah, COVID happened, um, but I was still able to go play cricket in Darwin for the winter. Um, and that was also good as well. I was able to expand my game even more and find out more about the way I wanted to bat and sort of find, you talk about finding a blueprint for your batting and um, trying to replicate that. And, and I was able to do that a bit more there. And then, yeah, another season in Perth, um, still not consistent. Um, and then, yeah, went to England, the season just gone and, and yeah, had a very consistent season and sort of just found a few things that clicked for me, um, more so mentally. And yeah, it was sort of just a few years of like working hard, but not seeing results. So like the hunger to score runs was really high, um, which, which helped a lot. Yeah, and I think just to paint the, the, the picture really clearly, 2019 you went and you, you came to Crouch End Cricket Club where I had signed as the overseas player and we were under the understanding that they, we'd been told that we could both play there because we both held British passports. But when we, you got over there, we found out that those were the, the wrong rules and I was playing in the first team, you had to play in the second team. You dominated that, but halfway through the season you went up and played in Yorkshire at a, playing Premier Cricket up there and or first team cricket up there and... 2020 you were due to go back to England but COVID happened so you had no cricket in the winter there but I, I remember you hit thousands of balls with with me and with others during that that off season that winter obviously you're playing grade cricket in Perth in the, in between in the Australian summer but then 2021's when you went to Darwin you had some really good patches up there you played some really good innings but certainly didn't have the sort of dominance that you did over in England and Last grade season, I think you got a 97. Um, you're still yet to get your first first grade 100, but you've had a number of really good innings um, that have showcased your capability, and it's the next step for you is turning that sort of into consistency in grade cricket. But let's go back to this season in England now. 2022, you arrive into London to play for Crouch End in the Premier League, and when I was there in 2019, we were in the Division 1, the, the division below the Premier League, but... What were your goals? What were your hopes? And what did you sort of really expect of yourself or want out of yourself for this season just gone when you arrived in England? Yeah, well, I always I always try and set big goals for myself because obviously I, I believe in myself and know I've always been able to do it, just never have. And so I remember, yeah, we sat down and um, set some goals of um, like things like averaging 50 and... Um, ways that I was not doing in Perth and things that I want to improve on and yeah so I, I got there and I, I really love the club Crouch End like they're a good bunch of guys and they have a very good culture at the club and a good environment to be around and play your cricket um, so I definitely didn't feel any pressure for them from them um, I was just able to go out and bat and um, express myself and um, learn about my about batting more and yeah I didn't I think I failed the first two games of the season and and then I was like oh like I'm a, I need some runs here like I'm in a bit of like if I fail again that's three games that where I haven't scored any runs but I played this friendly it wasn't a very good standard on like a Sunday and just like to have a hit and get some time out in the middle again and I got a hundred and um, I don't know if that did anything or not but um, the next week I was able to, yeah, sort of just relax a bit and I actually I got dropped on 15, um, but then I, I went on to get 100, 147, uh, I think it was not out, off of about 115 balls and and then I got 400s in a row and, and then sort of just went from there for the rest of the season. So like just that sort of one moment of getting dropped on 15 and then the rest of the season is completely different. So, And I can resonate with what you've said about playing a, a lower standard and, and getting runs because there's absolutely no substitute for scoring runs and spending time in the middle, regardless of the standard or the level. My best ever season in Perth, my standout season when I got the most runs in the first grade competition, I played a game back in Alice Springs where I grew up and I got 100 in that game and the standard was okay, but not anywhere near what Perth first grade was. But 
on the back of playing one game in my hometown, a small town of 30,000 people with only four teams and getting some runs, I came back to Perth full of confidence and I got, I think I got 48 in my first game and then things sort of progressed from there and ended up with 800 runs. So I think, yeah, it's a great message that we, we're never above any standard and if we do get the chance to spend time in the middle and play, we should respect that and not sort of say, oh, I'm just going to take it, slog them or whatever. But any time in the middle is great time in the middle. So back to you, Jolly. How did you feel after those first two games? You didn't sort of trouble the scorers too much in those first two games. Were you starting to get a bit anxious and put yourself under pressure or did you just have enough faith and belief that things would come good? Yeah, I, I was feeling good when I was batting, um, but I think I was just thinking a bit too much and... and like wanting to score runs so badly and the the, the week that I got um that hundred uh, the first one um in the in the league I, I I remember just just telling myself to just relax a bit more um like yeah obviously I want to score runs but just relaxing and sort of letting letting myself take over a bit and and I was able to just I think I remember in 2019 like I was going through a rough patch and you told me to to just like remember why you play cricket and to walk out there and like I'm grateful to be out here playing cricket in England and and sort of just having that mindset of um like why you're out there and that mindset really helps me just relax and and just enjoy being out in the middle and um yeah it happened to just flow pretty nicely and and, and had a big innings, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. I was just about to say, like, how you said that you were putting thinking too much and you wanted to relax more. So I was going to say, how did you do that? But you just answered that. You went back to, why am I here? I'm here because I love playing cricket. I'm here because I enjoy being with my mates. And that just being grateful for the little things and, and really can take the focus away from the outcome of, oh, I've got to score runs. I've got to score runs. Because whenever we... And this is more for our viewers. I'm not telling you this, Jolly. I know that you know this. But whenever we say to ourselves and we focus too much on the outcome, that's when we get tense. But when we go back to, okay, I'm hitting the ball well, haven't got the runs, but I'm hitting the ball well and I know I'm a good player and I'm just going to focus on ball by ball and I'm just happy to be here. I'm excited to play. Well, then that's when we're much calmer and that's when we play our best cricket. And so that's a really great message. And then obviously as you've said you had the hunger so you get your first 100 147 not out of 114 balls and you had a little bit of luck as you said and we definitely need luck in this game and and i'm a believer that the harder you work the more luck you get the more lucky you become so was that just a weight off your shoulders and then the floodgates open 400s in a row which is incredible and that was i was shocked at your hunger then because when you often often anyone gets 100 they relax and they fail a few times afterwards because they're on a high and they give themselves permission to fail because they're coming off the back of run. So what was your mindset week to week in that month where you got 100 after 100 after 100? Um, I, was just, I was just enjoying batting so much that I just, I just didn't want didn't to give my wicket away and I, I didn't want to be on the sidelines watching. So like the best place I was enjoying the most was just being out in the middle. And that's probably why... I, that's probably why I was um, batting well and scoring runs was because I was just enjoying it, enjoying being out there and letting the rest happen. And, yeah, I was obviously hunger, hungry to, to prove myself in, in the league and um, to prove myself and um, to all the, all the hard work that I've done and to be able to sort of be in that position where I can make that happen, I know how to do it, um, it was sort of, yeah, just, you just want to do it. G'day legend, thanks a lot for watching this video and about Joel's story and his success in the UK. If you are an Aussie or a Kiwi and have any interest in playing a season in the UK next year, 2023, then please click on the link that's on the screen right now and that will be in the description below and you can register your interest. We will then send you a registration form we have partnered with one of the biggest and best agents in the UK who has hundreds of clubs in the UK looking for Aussies and, and Kiwis especially. You don't have to be a, a sort of a professional or a first grade cricketer. This opportunity is available to players of all abilities. Um, so register your interest and we can get a profile created for you and we can do our best to get you a club. It's an Ashes year next year, 2023. 
So we're trying to help as many Aussies and Kiwis get over to the UK and have a season and an experience that will help them become a better cricketer that they will never forget. So click on the link below. Now let's get back into the video. So were you getting 100 and then reflecting the next day on the Monday saying, right, I've got to go again? Or were you taking a few days to just let it sink in? And like, what was your reflection and your reviewing? And, and I just want to really dig into what were you, what was your practices? What were your habits in that time? So that when others are getting runs, they can sort of potentially copy and, and make it a good period into a great period. Because that's what I always preach, that the best players, they still fail. We look at your season, two lot scores under 10 in the first two games. They're, that's not dominating. But you look at your, your judge that your season, 18 innings, and you dominated across 18 innings. But what you did so well is you made your good days, great days, and your good times, great times. What was it like week to week? You finish your game, you score 100, you're obviously really happy. What did you do Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, leading into the next game? Yeah, well, for anyone that knows me, I, I love coffee. So on a Monday or on the Sunday, I would yeah, go grab a coffee and just watch the footage of, of the innings and um, just write down a few things of what I did well, um, what I did leading up to the game, and, and then any areas that I wanted to improve on um and I just found a very a consistent a consistent mindset that I was enjoying while I was out batting and yeah I was just able to get back into that space into that space each each week from there and and during the week I I just did what I sort of felt like um in terms of hitting balls like if I wanted to work on a certain area I would work on that, um, but most importantly, I just made sure I was I was mentally fresh. Um, how does that? What is what is mentally fresh to you? How how does that look? It it looks like um, I enjoy hitting balls, so I like to hit a few times a week. Um, but it's it's getting to the weekend and looking forward to getting into the contest and being competitive and not feeling like you're burnt out from hitting tons of balls during the week and and I think it's just a belief in yourself that like nothing's going to change your technique that day the only thing that's going to help you get runs is your mindset and the decisions you make yeah love that that's amazing advice and now that you've brought up the big t word technique obviously you've spent a lot of time grooving and and growing your technique um, over the last few years and we've done a lot of work on certain little things but it looked like you were just playing with a lot of freedom. Were you tinkering? Were you, what were you doing in terms of managing your game? Um, did you have a real technical focus or did you just, and I'm talking Monday to Friday, sort of twice, two, three sessions that you're hitting during the week, or were you just more of let's just get in the contest at training, trust my technique and just play with a clear mind? Yeah, I think because... Mi- me and you've done so much technique over the years like I could trust my technique that I know it was good enough for that level um but it was actually funny like I've never triggered before in my life and the week that I got that first hundred I I was like oh I'm gonna trigger this week I just feel like I'm getting a little bit stuck um so I just started triggering and um I've, I felt like it helped me get in Um, good positions and so did you practice a trigger in training or did you do what steve smith did and just in the middle you just started triggering yeah i practiced a little bit that week um and and it felt comfortable so i I just did it and um and yeah looking back it's it yeah it's helped me a lot it's probably helped me hit in maybe different areas that i usually would um but yeah i wouldn't really the way in terms of managing my game was just the start of training i'll just do some basic like underarms and throw downs just making sure i'm i'm grooving the basics like we've always done um and then yeah i had a bit more focus on just facing bowlers and sidearm and just more of a like just batting and um like expanding my game and getting in the contest yeah, and just to give some more depth to that, Joel has probably hit as many balls as anyone I know, anyone I coach. I know Teague hits millions of balls and, and he's right up there, but you're there with him and, and maybe one or two others that I coach over the last few years. You've had an incredible work ethic and we have 
worked really hard at little technical things and built so you've built some fantastic foundations so you've got to a point where at 22 years old you're now and having played sort of a lot of like premier cricket but then also three this was your third season in a winter over the last four years you've played a fair bit of cricket now where you've got to a point where you are just trusting it and we love the saying here train it and trust it and that's what it sounds like you were doing you're still ticking off your little basics of underarms and grooving and just getting those positions right but probably to a lesser extent than you have done in the past and then just really getting in the contest and I think that anyone young listening to this they can't think that this is permission to just go and face sidearm all day you still have to tick those boxes and do those underarms and spend hours and hours grooving but as you said ultimately it's about getting in the contest and and having a clear mind when you go out and perform isn't it yeah yeah absolutely yeah it's just yeah doing those all the all the reps and and yeah trusting it is a big part of that i think as well and so you're scoring lots of runs there's a fair bit of sort of i suppose buzz around the clubs up and about because you're going well we're posting on our socials and there was some traction from that how did you stay level how did you stay level and how did you stay hungry to keep going (laughs) um some people say i don't really have many emotions um, you and me both. <laughs> um, but no, when, whenever I sort of felt like I was getting complacent, I would just remind myself of um, what I needed to keep doing and, and, and where I wanted to go in cricket and that brought me back. And I'm a fairly yeah, humble person, so I never let myself get too um, ahead of myself. And um, I would always yeah, keep in touch with you and... And even after getting 100, you, you would say, oh, if you were not out the end or be ruthless with you could have got 180 today or, or, or just those little reminders to, to keep yourself going. And a few guys in the, in the Crouch End team as well would always remind me, like, you're best when you bat selfishly. That's the best thing for the team. So um, just always reminding myself of that. Yeah, and, and just... Yeah, to to give clarity, 1,242 runs at an average of 82. Um, But I was often saying, Jolie, you left 100 out there today. Mm. You got 150, but there was 20 overs left. You were doing it easy or, well done, Jolie, another 100, but you got out with 22 overs to go. And I was trying to be the bad guy who was poking you to just to not be complacent, wasn't I? And, And I'm sure that got annoying at times, but I think that's my role as a mentor is to just keep pushing you to, to do more. As well as you were doing, we can both look, sit here and go, wow, you could have got 1,600 runs this year. Had, But at the same time, that's, I think it's the way David Warner bats. It's, you, were, you were playing some really positive, aggressive cricket. You struck at 100. You were sort of scoring a run of ball most innings without taking many risks, but you were taking the game on, and, and that sometimes means you get out. And there are, So your numbers, reading them out here, 12... 142 runs at an average of 82.8, highest of 184, 350s, 600s. You faced 1234 balls, so your strike rate was 100.65. You hit 169 fours and 17 sixes. Uh, You and I spoke after sort of your last game. We said, um, I think you've got to try and bring that same sort of intent back to Perth, but... Obviously, the bowling here will be a bit tighter and the grounds are bigger and it's, it's harder to score so freely. So take us a little bit inside your game plan. Like how were you setting up and, you, and what were you looking for early and, and what was your game plan to, that, that made you so successful? Yeah, I think I, think I was um, really... I was always looking to score. Um, I find that's, that's the best mindset to be in um, and... I was very good on the bad balls. So as soon as I got a bad ball, I was always ready to hit it and um, execute on it. And I was able to yeah defend the good balls and adjust to the pitches in England. Um, like It's obviously tough to drive. Um, we play with Duke's balls. So I often found myself hitting pretty square. Um, so I've never been a massive cutter of the ball, but found myself cutting a lot of score a lot of runs through there um and I, and found like teams were actually trying to like cut that stop my cut shot but I was still able to score through there 
um, and obviously left handers are pretty strong through off their legs and pulling, um, and then yeah, I was able to um, just stick to that and and yeah, I was pretty positive against spin. Like I I didn't tend to use my feet and hit over the top a lot. I I tend to sweep. I had a lot of scored a lot of runs sweeping, um, lapping, and and yeah. I don't know. Is that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that that's, again, the sweep shot is something you spent a lot of time developing over the last few years, isn't it? It's not a shot that you had in your sort of artillery no. two or three years ago, is it? No. I, and guys would ask me, like, oh, like, how do you play the sweep? And, and yeah, it's simply I just practiced it a lot and, and then I was able to trust it in games and, and I got out a few times playing it. Um, but I just mi- mis executed it, but it got me so many runs that it was it's such a good shot to have. And that reminds me of like Ricky Ponting. He used to get out pulling sometimes, but it was his best shot and he scored th- thousands of runs from it. So when you did get out playing it, this is a great learning for any young batter out there. Did you start to question yourself or did you just say, right, that's part of my game. I didn't execute it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was, I was questioning. I was like, oh, do I? I don't have to sweep like I can just get off strike and um, take a different uh, a different risk or um, so I definitely did question it but I, I knew I, I scored so many runs playing it and I knew I just need to um, adjust a few things and maybe hit a few more sweep shots at training making sure that my face isn't closing or um, something a little bit technical and um, just made sure I back myself and in, in the game. Now let's talk a little bit about your sort of process in between balls because when you're going well and you're scoring lots of runs and you're seeing them like a beach ball, one of the hardest things to do, I think, is to just calm yourself down and not go after the wrong ball. And I know at times, like we we spoke after most innings and and there were innings where you did get out sort of like I think maybe the semi-final against Ealing and, and you sort of probably went after the wrong ball, but that's part of batting but how you did it so well what was your what was your post your pre, your in between and your pre ball routine when you were going well um it was it was very basic and yeah when i was going well i didn't i always made sure i kept reminding myself of um, my routine just to help me get back into the present moment when the ball was being bowled um, and times, yeah, when I was hitting the ball really well, I would go away from that and, yeah, find myself maybe making a mistake. Um, but, yeah, making sure that um, before the game, I made sure that no matter what, I'm always remembering to go through my process um, pre-ball, um, in between balls to get me in the present moment. And, yeah, the things like pretty basic, like just being mindful um, walking out to the crease, like I have a little run through that I do, um, and pre ball just a few a few taps on my bat, um, the, the, my trigger, making sure I'm balanced, and then just focusing on the ball, telling myself to watch the ball, and then in between balls, I'll just sort of sort of make sure I'm thinking like externally, um, just about the bowler, the pitch, um, where I'm looking to score against this bowler. Um, and then just being able to refocus into that next ball. And, and yeah, it was pretty basic. Yeah, awesome. But it sounds like you did have something that you followed and something you trusted. And that's something you've also worked on over the last few years, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's always things that I'm like I, after a game, I write down, oh, that, that went well when I was focusing on that. And so when I have, when I have innings where I'm thinking too much and um, not as focused as I want to be, I try and use these little tools to help me get back in the present moment, help me get into the contest as much as I can. Um, and things you've spoken about, like even if it's picking a fight with someone just um, mentally and just like, I'm not going to let you get me out or um, I'm going to be a better player than you today. Like some of those things helped as well. And that's the Michael Jordan theory is like Michael Jordan used to, from the the Last Dance documentary series, he used to make up stories that someone had said something about him to fire himself up. And they say that Shane Warne was like that, where he'd throw the ball back at the batter and try and pick a fight to get himself fired up to get in that contest. And so, 
yeah, it's, I think that it's so important for any young athlete, but especially a young batter, any, not, not just young, but any batter. It's something I've been working on with Josh Philippi is developing a mental process or a mental routine that, as you said, brings you back into the present moment every single ball because our peak performance lives in the present moment and we want to try and get our mind and attention in the present moment so that our mind can make a good decision and our body can move and react. Um, and it's it's often not easy when things aren't going your way. It gets much easier when things are going your way. But I think the the most impressive thing for me was was your ability this year to just back it up week after week, week after week. Um, what? How do you think you're going to now bring that back to Perth? Obviously, as I've said, the cricket's going to be slightly different. It's still bat versus ball. The game doesn't change. You're wearing different cl- colours, but the ball is different. It's not a Dukes. It's a, it's a kookaburra. We play with a white ball here um, at the start of the season. Grounds are bigger. Bowling probably is a bit more accurate. But how do you think you can transfer what you've done over there, record-breaking season, back to your cricket here in, in Australia? Yeah, it's something that I've sort of been thinking about. Um, but it just comes down to like me knowing that I've done it a few times in grade cricket here. Um, I was able to do it consistently there and even when I went up into the second team uh, for Middlesex and I was still able to do that against better bowlers and and I think it's yeah it's something like why can't I bring that back to Perth and and like yeah the, the bowlers are a bit more consistent and we play the wickets are better the bowlers are a bit more consistent um so i think it it should be um not easier but there's more i guess in your control in perth i think as well yeah excellent and, you, and belief is the big thing you've done it you have done it in grade cricket before it's just trying to do it consistently but one thing that i find having played so much cricket in england and so much cricket in australia that one of the biggest tr- struggles that we all have is we don't get to bat every single week the nice thing is in October, the start of the season, you've got four one days to start the season. So pending the weather being okay, you'll get a hit every week. But some weeks in grade cricket, you can go three weeks, and that, that is a hard thing to manage. And I know a lot of English players find that hard when they come out here. But I think that the one thing that's probably been lacking from – the two things that have probably been lacking from your game in Australia has been that belief and that blueprint. And I think you've got both now. And so I think it's only good things to come from you. And there's – Certainly going to be times when you struggle, like everyone does, but hopefully you've learnt from that season in England and you'll make your good days great days like you have done in England. Um, tell us a bit more about your experience playing second team cricket. You played a little bit with Middlesex and then one game with Worcester at the end of the season. And how did you manage the jump up f- like from levels? Because I know a lot of young players, and this is what this whole podcast is about, it's about trying to help one young person out there we can help one young person out there in their career and their cricket even just this next weekend or, or at some point when they listen to this well then this has been worthwhile this conversation so a lot of people struggle when they go up a level they get a bit overawed they get a bit anxious they get a bit tight or tense because they're playing at a higher level how did you manage it you're going up to play for Middlesex you've got a British passport you want to play county cricket you were over there trying to push your case and play county cricket it obviously meant a lot to you these are big games you're playing and you don't get many opportunities at that level, but you did well. You got 90 in your first innings. How did you manage it? Um, yeah, I was definitely nervous, um, but nerves are good. They, they, that means you care about what you're doing. And um, so just reminding myself of that um, and like the guys that I was playing with, like I played against them and in, in, well, I played with them in cl- club cricket and against them and, um, just reminding myself that they're like they're in the same I'm in the same team as them so even though they might be better or they might be contracted like they're playing in the same team as me so there's no reason why I can't be the best player in that team um, and I, I got 10 in the first innings and then it, w- it was the second innings where I got 90, 94 and um, the first innings I was a little bit tense um, hit a few shots, got a, got a few away, but then the second innings, I, I definitely relaxed more, and I I sort of said like like I play my best cricket when I'm looking to score, and I'm sort of I'm I'm positive, I'm looking to put pressure back on the bowler, and they had I think a first team spinner playing, and 
um, a few other decent bowlers and um, I was able to just, yeah, go out there with the same mindset as I did um, in club cricket and just sort of, yeah, put pressure back on the bowlers and and get into that sort of mindset that I was looking to get into and it, and it came off. Well, for the record, it was Amir Verdi uh, playing for... Surrey, and he's played for England, the England Lions, England A, so he's absolutely no mug, and he's played a fair bit of first-team cricket, um, 41 first-class matches, and I think what impressed a lot of people that day was that your ability to play spin, um, because that is something a lot of players struggle with. It's They can handle fast bowling because that's where everybody practices, but your ability to handle a high-quality spinner was something that really sort of stood out. So... Just to share for our listeners and viewers, that is has been a focus of your game over the last however long, hasn't it? It's been the ability. We've spoken about developing your sweep shot, but let's talk a little bit about how you've worked hard at your, not just your technique, but also your game plan against spin. And to give everyone context, you probably, many years ago when we first started playing together, I mean, when you were first year of first grade, you were quite a defensive player. I remember one innings, you got 19 off 100 balls and you pretty limited didn't hit a boundary that whole innings and you you kept out some good bowlers I think they might have had Matt Kelly that day and a pretty good attack um but then you started to expand and you probably went too far the other way and you you got out taking risks hitting the ball in the air and doing all these things and I think you're probably now in a really good place where you've found your middle ground you're still more on the positive side from your intent but the spin has been a big focus in your game hasn't it yeah yeah it has and yeah, it just comes down to, um, yeah, practicing it and then um, being able to, especially like when you when you go to England, I, I find it really easy to just play freely and um, sort of express m- myself and my batting and um, to be able to sort of find that level of that right tempo that you talk about and not being too aggressive and um, but still looking to to look to score so yeah just was able to I think I was only able to find that balance from playing games of cricket and yeah like we say it's hard to do that in Perth because you might not bat as much but just having those seasons in the winter I was just able to find that balance and and just replicate that and I'm a huge fan of hitting thousands of balls I think there's no substitute for hard work but you can't have those learnings in the nets and that's why I think it's such an amazing thing what you've done and a few of the other young guys and that's what I used to do when I was your age is play cricket go overseas go to Darwin and actually play games because that's where you really learn the game and I feel like we're trying to master three things we're trying to master ourselves as a person we're trying to master our game and we're trying to master the game and understand the game because the game's always changing and our game has to evolve and adapt with the game that's changing around us. And most importantly, we have to understand ourselves because we can understand the game and our game, but if we don't understand our thoughts and our emotions, well, we're never going to get the best out of ourselves. So, And that is what playing cricket gives you, not training in the nets, but actually playing. And that's why I think you've your success has been a result and the sum of your previous experiences. And it's the thousands of balls you've hit in the nets plus a previous season in England, plus four seasons in Premier Cricket in Perth, plus a season in Darwin. All of those things added up with a little bit of belief and a little bit of understanding of what you're doing, and you, you had this amazing season. So, Jolly, I think we're pretty close to wrapping up, but is there anything else that you think can sort of give us a bit of an insight into what made this year so successful or any advice you'd have for any young players or a young version of yourself having sitting here now um, on the back of a record-breaking season in Premier Cricket? Yeah, I think you sort of touched on it is um, making sure that you, like growing yourself as a person outside of cricket um, because often you find when you're pursuing something, you can, you cannot, you forget, you forget about like the, you're actually a person outside of the game you're playing. So I think just reading reading books and getting perspective from other people um, like yourself and um, there's so many podcasts out there these days where you can learn from people that have been successful in their sport for 10 years and to be able to learn that um, and try and apply that to your life has really helped me as well. Um, 
so I think that's good for any young cricketer to um, always look to learn and grow themselves outside of cricket. Absolutely, and you're a huge advocate of personal development and, and never-ending learning and and sort of mental skills and, and fitness. And we talk at Cricket Mentoring of the six pillars of success, technical, tactical, mental, emotional, physical, and lifestyle. And I don't think anyone I know embodies that as well as you do. You, you take your fitness very seriously. You're a qualified personal trainer and the lifestyle is very important to you. You're a vegan, you eat well, um, and you're mentally and emotionally, you take that very seriously. And I think that you're, you've built a character and a person that, is a high performer regardless of what happens on the cricket field and i think that that's a great message that and it's something we share with all our athletes that you're a person first and an athlete second and that you even if cricket isn't going well you've still got a million other things in your life that you add value and you're a valuable person regardless if you score 100 or score a duck and we're sitting across the table and i haven't seen you for five months you've become this sort of gun this superstar but you're still the same person. And, and I probably shouldn't say become. You, you've always been that person, but you've had this success now. But you're still the same person you were with a few more experiences and you've hit the cricket ball pretty well, but it's really important that we, we keep perspective and we're only as good as our next inning. So it's it's sort of what, what happens next that's super important now that you've put yourself on the radar both in England and, and here in, in Australia. And I wish you all the success. I've been sort of following since you were 16 and, and very, very, very pleased to see the results come your way this season because you have put in the work and you do deserve it as much as anyone. But this is just the beginning. So I can't wait to see what's next and, and hope that WA Cricket can now see the best of you as well. Ah, cheers, Skulls. Thanks, Matt. Well, I hope everyone watching or listening has got something out of this. I thought it would be really uh, interesting to go inside the mind of a high performer someone who is doing incredible things in their game and in this sport um, and hopefully take a thing or two. And that's the whole thing with this podcast is you probably won't take 50 things, but if you can take one or two things and apply it to yourself and your game, well, then we've done our job here on the podcast. So thanks very much, Jolie. Jolie, where can people follow your journey and follow you? Um, yeah, just on Instagram. I think it's joel underscore curtis. Um, I think that's the main one. Yep. So head over and check Jolie out. Send him a message if you've listened to this and you found it interesting or informative. Um, and make sure you subscribe. Leave us a review if you haven't done so already on the podcast. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, please give us a like and a comment. And we will try and bring you more podcast um, episodes very soon now that we're getting back into the cricket season here in Australia. But I just wanted to say thanks a lot for tuning in. I hope you've got some value. And we will see you soon, legends. Are you sick of failing over and over again? Do you want to perform at your best more consistently? The Cricket Mentoring community is for you. Join an online community of like-minded players, coaches and parents all over the world and become a better, more confident cricketer today.